The UFC 297 pay-per-view taking place January 20th in Toronto is not looking so hot. They lost a couple key fights, and one of the big issues I have with the UFC right now is that they have not made an effort to replace those fights, and they're just cool with how the pay-per-view is, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. My name is James Lynch, so the big fight that got off this card was the Jan Blahovic and Alexander Rakic rematch, a fight that I was really looking forward to. Blahovic uh, losing to Alex Pereira in his last fight. Rakic has not fought since his first fight against Jan a few years back where he got injured so really excited for this uh, grudge match and I thought okay you know this this injury if you go look at the news took place on December 7th fights on January 20th maybe they could pull something together and look I'm fully aware that the UFC probably has a hard time getting some fighters to compete in Canada I know there's some strict uh, you know border laws and things like that and I also know that we're coming up to the holiday season when we find out about this news but the thing that really bothered me about the fa about this fight was that the UFC didn't bother to get Rakic an opponent for that card. Instead, they moved Rakic to the UFC 300 card in April fighting uh, Yuri Prohaska, which I love that fight. But what's going on with Toronto? Why was there no replacement fight for Toronto? That's something that really kind of irked me a little bit was that the UFC decided to not go that route with Alexander Rakic, who has fought in Toronto before. He actually had a fight, um, you know, uh, a couple years back against Devin Clark on the last UFC Toronto card. I actually forgot this. I went back and looked. Uh, he was actually the first fight of the night. He fought Devin Clark in a really, really entertaining matchup. So I uh, don't understand why the UFC didn't make more of an effort to give Rakic an opponent for the Toronto card. That's something that's a little bit disappointing. And then we found out uh, shortly after that, Dominic Reyes, his opponent, Carlos Olberg, off the card due to an injury. At the time I'm recording this, which is January 4th, there has been no update on if Reyes will stay on the card. He kind of insinuated in the social post that they're going to rebook that fight as well. So this is what the pay-per-view looks like right now. And I'm going to go through each fight here quickly. And I'm going to talk about what I think the UFC could have done. And it seems like they're choosing not to do. So look, Sean Strickland, Drake is duplicy. I've been very uh, vocal about this. I love this fight. This is a great Main event. The UFC got this one right. Very, very, very happy to see this middleweight title fight. Co-main event, Raquel Pennington, Myra Silva. It's a title fight, so that does help for the pay-per-view. Is it the most exciting title fight? Not so much. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this one pans out. Nothing against either, uh, you know, girl here, but Raquel Pennington not exactly known for really exciting fights, so that's a bit of a bummer, but again, it's a title fight, so you can kind of give that a pass. I do really like this Arnold Allen and Avoyev fight. I think that's definitely a pay-per-view worthy fight. And I also don't really have a huge issue with Mike Malott being on the pay-per-view. He's from Toronto. This is sort of like a big fight for him, fighting that ranked opponent. Don't mind that. But the rest of the card just looks like a fight night card. And I would, if I had to take a guess here, I think they're going to put Chris Curtis and Marc-Andre Berrio on the pay-per-view. Which, let's be honest here, got a lot of respect for both guys. It's not really a pay-per-view worthy fight, in my opinion. Uh, that's a fight that I think is perfect for the prelims. But there's been no effort to replace these fights, and I, and I got a big issue with that, right? Like, and this was, you know, this was also the card that was supposed to possibly have Volkanovski and Tapori on it. Um, so instead, we get Strickland and Duplessis. But I just feel like the UFC is really uh, not treating the Canadian fight fans very well as far as like booking fights together. I want to remind people the last UFC card they had, which initially was a card that was supposed to have Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena fighting each other. Um, I was not interested in that. We saw the rematch. We saw what Nunes did to Pena. Had no interest in that whatsoever we lose the Stephen Thompson and Michelle Pereira fight they ended up rebooking that and we also lost Chris Dawkins and Cleo Roundtree at least on that card the UFC had enough sense to rebook the Oliver and Darius fight on that pay-per-view and that ended up being a pretty good card that was a huge fight and they put it on that card and I think everyone was happy about that but there's been no effort to do that for this card and I got a big problem for that with, with that with the fact that Toronto is Canada's largest city it's Canadian fight fans I, I mean I don't have the data in front of me but um, I, I know for a fact that Canadian fight fans are you know take up a big Big portion of the UFC viewership um, there's a lot of people who want to watch this and you know again they have not been back to Toronto since 2018 that was the card with uh, Max Holloway and uh, Brian Ortega and if you look at that card it was it was a little bit better right you've got you know Shevchenko and Joanny and Jacek kind of a bit of a super fight with you and Jacek moving up to fight her you had the return of Gunnar Nelson Hakeem Dewada was looking good at the time that was a good fight you had Thiago Santos and Jimmy Manoa just like an absolutely heavy hitter fight and on the prelims you had Gilbert Burns and Olivier that was a good fight you had Eric Anderson and Theodoro, bracket toward Matthew Lopez, um, and, and you had Rakic and Devin Clark. Like this to me was a much stronger card in terms of what they were able to put together. And this card not looking so good. And again, I understand that maybe they have some issues booking fights, but I just like the UFC to come out and say, look, we tried. It was hard getting fighters into Canada or something, but there's been no talk about this. All we've been hearing about is what they're going to do at UFC 300. And then you look at some of the other pay-per-views they have, UFC 298, UFC 299, 
those cards look a lot better. They do. Like top to bottom, those those cards are far better than than, than this card. And I just feel like uh, the UFC has a habit of just not making Canada a priority uh, when it comes to putting their pay-per-views together. And take a look at the tickets here. And I know this isn't something necessarily the UFC controls, but the cheapest ticket right now you can get is four hundred eighty-five dollars Canadian. The most expensive ticket you can get, or pair of tickets, I should say, forty-nine k. Like if you want to sit in the lower bowl, uh, you're going to be paying almost a thousand dollars. You want to sit in the very very lower end here. You're looking at two three grand for floor seats for a card like this i don't think it's worth it i've had a number of fighters actually that i've talked to um that aren't competing on this card but are like i'm, I'm asking them I'm like are you gonna go are you gonna go they're like no man the tickets are too expensive i don't know i i just like i have a big problem with the ufc not really prioritizing canada and you know i know that there aren't any big canadian superstars it would probably make things a lot easier if we had a george st pierre in the octagon right now that you could kind of look at and say okay we're going to build this card around him there's there's no one like that that exists but I mean, just look at this card that they had. And granted, this is back in 2011. But look at this card: Saint Pierre and Jake Shields. You had Jose Aldo and Mark Hominick. You had Lyoto Machida, Randy Couture, Matt Yushchenko and Brills was just a highlight reel, you know, setup fight, and that certainly got that with a 20 second knockout. And then you had Benson Henderson taking on Mark Bocek. You had Rory McDonald, Nate Diaz on the undercard. You had Jake Ellenberger. I mean, this card was far. You know, this this doesn't look anything like what we're seeing today. I mean, this was a card that you could tell the UFC put a lot of effort into. And it, to me, it's just very disappointing to see the UFC not at least acknowledge like, hey, we tried to do something or at least say, hey, we're working on some replacements. But there's been none of that. And I don't really understand it. And let's go look at some of the other cards that are around UFC 297. So the week before we have the Magomed Ankalaev and Johnny Walker rematch. Now, look, this fight's at the apex. It's basically a warehouse, right? Um, the UFC trying to save some money by hosting their events there. Why couldn't you just move Ankle Live and Walker to UFC 297? Do you think people are really going to care? How much of an audience are you getting at the Apex these days? How much are tickets? Like, these are fight night cards. They're supposed to be, like, free cards you watch on TV. Even, like, a Nicolau and Cop you could have moved on, like, like to this card. Um, I, I just don't understand why the UFC couldn't just pull one of these fights and move it a week. Is there a visa issue? Maybe there is. I don't know, but... It just seems a little bit odd that they wouldn't at least try to maybe put this... Like, you put Ankle Ivan Walker on this card as a replacement for Blahovich and Rakic, no one's complaining at all because it's a huge fight, and that's a fight that I think deserves to be on a pay-per-view. And, and that's the other thing. Like, who wants to see Ankle Ivan Walker in a warehouse? Like, this is a pivotal fight for the light heavyweight division. This fight should be on a pay-per-view. So I think the UFC should have tried to put that fight on UFC 297, but let's say for some reason that couldn't happen. Maybe they didn't want to move it a week. Let's look at the card that you have the week after UFC 297 or a couple weeks after, I should say. Actually, if my dates are correct here. Yeah, it is the week after. No, it's two weeks after. So there's, a, I guess, a gap after that. But look at this. Delizze Imovov, another apex fight that they could have put on UFC 297. You had Moicano and Drew Dober. That's a good fight, too, they could have put on the card. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know why the UFC can't get a little bit more creative when it comes to booking cards. And they have to know that, like, Look, Toronto's been starving for cards. They're paying a lot of money. The fans are going to show up. They're going to support. Like, I'm totally fine with them putting a lot of Canadian fighters on this card. I think it's good exposure. But you got to mix it up a little bit with some better matchups. And just right now, this is just a very disappointing pay-per-view overall. Like, we got to hope that Strickland and Duplessis is going to be an amazing fight. And I think it will. I mean, I'm going to be a little glass half full here and say that this fight probably will be pretty good. But... Knock on wood, nothing happens to this main event because if it does, this is going to go down as one of the worst pay-per-views we've ever had. So um, l let's hope everything's good to go. But like I said, my biggest issue here right now is the fact that you got Toronto as the UFC or the Canadian... Toronto is the largest Canadian city. That's what I'm trying to say. In Canada, you got to pull out the stops a little bit better for a card like this. And to me, it's just disappointing the UFC didn't even make an effort to try and replace some of those fights. So that, that's really what kind of grinds my gears a bit is that the UFC is just not making Canada a priority. And I think the fans deserve a lot better because, again, some of the biggest fight fans are from Canada. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments section below. What do you think of this card? What do you rate it right now on paper? I know these are the type of cards usually that end up being pretty good because we're, you know, people like me are talking about how, you know, it's not a strong card, but um, I, I just think right now the UFC could have could have put in a better effort here to make this card uh, a lot, a lot stronger. And this is the type of stuff I see in social media as well. And I, I completely agree with people. If you're paying $400 for a ticket, you got to see a better pay-per-view card than this. That, that's just my personal opinion. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.